Tyler Young, a Dell Certified Solutions Architect here at XY Technologies. Today, I'm going to be showing you what performance metrics are included within a live optics report. Let's get started. First, let's begin with the environment page. This page is where you'll be directed anytime you open up a project within the live optics portal. From here, you can see a snapshot as to what was captured within your live optics project. You can see the total amount of compute resources. So here you can see it captured a total of 64 physical cores across eight sockets. Uh, you can see the total storage that was captured. So you can see that it captured you know, 40.45 tebibytes worth of storage. And then you can also see the total amount of memory that was captured. So, you know, a tebibyte and a half worth of memory. In addition, you can also see the peak aggregate network throughput. Uh, you can see the IOPS at a 95th percentile, and you can also see the average daily writes. Now, uh, for the most part, I like to utilize this page um, really just to uh, confirm that the live optics that I captured with my customer or, or within our, our environment, you know, was the environment that we intended to. Um, for instance, you know, I'll confirm, hey, Mr. Customer, um, you know, the 64 cores is what we're seeing in roughly 40, a little over 40 tebibytes for the storage. Um, is that what you're expecting to see or are we missing any parts of your environment? Um, is this more than you're expecting? Maybe we captured, you know, a server that you weren't intending to, you know, that's where we'll have the conversation there. And in addition to the resources captured, uh, if we scroll down, you'll also see the server rules. So for instance, you can see, you know, 34 VMs were captured across four hypervisors. Uh, you'll see that, you know, the entire uh, operating systems that was captured is all Windows, Windows Server 2019 to be exact. Um, if there was any Linux or VMware, you'd see you know, that color represented in this chart as well. Uh, but for this instance, uh, it was only Windows, so that's why it's all blue. Uh, you'll also see the, the top server manufacturers. So this is useful if you have a mixed environment with you know, servers that are not just Dell, but maybe you have other uh, server manufacturers in that environment as well. Uh, it will pick those up and it will communicate with those servers. So it'll just you know give you a inventory of those as well if you want it to. Uh, it also shows you the uh, ability to display the top five servers by a specific resource of your choice. So for instance, you can see, you know, what servers have the most IOPS, you know, what top five servers have the you know most memory, C you know, CPU, et cetera. Um, of course, since we only captured a total of four physical servers or, or four hypervisors rather, um, you know, we're only going to see essentially the, the top four here rather than the top five. Next, let's take a look at the performance tab, as this is where you're going to be spending the majority of your time within live optics, especially if your goal is to better understand how your workloads are performing over the entire duration of the live optics run, rather than just seeing a, a you know, simple snapshot. So let's start here on the left hand side, um, you know, you can see the, you know, four hypervisors that were captured within this report, they're labeled all under, you know, server cluster one, so we have server one, two, three, and four. Um, now, you know, you might be asking, well, you know, how do I know which one's which? So, you know, I have this showing in anonymous mode, as you can see up here, um, so that, you know, just uh, for privacy reasons. However, you know, if you're not in anonymous mode, you can actually, you know, see your actual server names. You can see the, you know, name of the cluster, the each disk name, the interfaces. You can see all of that. Um, again, I just have that hidden for security and privacy reasons. Um, but, you know, what you can do is, you know, right now we have... You know, we're looking at this IOPS graph for, you know, the entire duration. So, you know, the entire 24 hour run um, of everything that's shown within this left hand panel. Um, if I wanted to, I could highlight a specific you know, cluster or or a server disk all the way down to the network interface and just see each individual one and see that performance that's, you know, being, um, you know, pushed through that that component or, or that server. Um, or if I wanted to, I could even click these bubbles and select the multitude of of different, you know, combinations of servers and components and then recalculate to maybe, you know, block out any sort of, um, you know, disks or servers that I don't want to, um, you know, account for. Um, from here, you'll see that the, you know, initial graph that we're looking at is the IOPS graph. Um, you can choose, you know, to kind of go through between IOPS, disk throughput, you know, IO size, etc. I always like to look at all of the graphs together in unison, uh, this is going to allow me to essentially see, um, you know, correlations and, and start comparing different graphs to one another. For instance, even just right off the bat, you can see the IOPS and the disk throughput. Um, you know, when we see a, a peak in IOPS, you know, generally we're going to be seeing a peak in disk throughput. That's not always the case, right? I mean, every workload's different, 
But again, seeing everything together just helps at least me understand the workload from a different perspective and, and maybe, you know, just see some underlying factors that maybe, you know, is, is um, not as noticeable when just looking at each graph individual. Um, so um, back to the graph. So, you know, there's graphs that show, you know, IOPS, the, the pink is going to be showing, you know, the, the reads and the blue is going to be showing you the, the writes. Um, and same with all these graphs. So, you know, disk throughput, right? That it shows you the, the peaks of all that. Again, you know, reads being in, in pink, blues being uh, writes. And if you ever have a question of, you know, what a graph is representing and, and what that means, you know, when looking at a graph, you can highlight of these little, um, you know, IO, uh, the little I symbol here, and it shows you a brief description of what IO size is or what disk throughput is and helps you, you know, better understand what this graph is trying to tell you overall. Um, this latency graph is probably one of the most important graphs that we spend times on with our customers, um, just because, you know, we can look at IOPS or we can look at disk throughput, et cetera, and it's nice seeing what those numbers are. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, what most of our customers are really concerned about is having as low latency as possible. So, you know, this is the graph that we, you know, see customers caring about the most and what we're typically spending the most time, you know, spending on trying to kind of, you know, um, get that as, as close to zero as possible. Um, you can see Q depth, um, you know, you can see uh, net CPU uh, utilization. Um, this not only shows you just the, you know, um, you know, total CPU utilization, but it also shows you the saturated cores as well. So that's something that is useful to know, especially when sizing a virtual environment. Uh, memory. Uh, this is one graph that I'll, um, you know, throw a little you know, caution flag up. You know, all these other graphs, you'll see the different, you know, peaks and you'll see the lows of, of the different graphs. You notice here on the memory graph that it's all stagnant, right? It's, it's, it's a static graph. Uh, the reason being is, you know, when it shows, um, you know, 542 used memory, um, you know, this isn't really talking about used, this is allocated. So all the other graphs is truly, you know, what's being utilized during that moment in time. Um, but the memory graph, when you see used, this is allocated and then free is going to be unallocated. So just keep that in the back of your mind. A network throughput, this shows you the, uh, the, the, the amount of data that's being sent and received through the ports on the servers. That's where I said it was important where if you wanted to kind of dive into each specific network interface, you can even get that granular and kind of see which network interface is, is pushing them out the most, you know, the most amount of data. That way, if maybe you want to, you know, enable MPIO or to just help load balance to kind of spread the performance out a little better throughout the, the network interfaces, you can do that as well just by, again, you know, understanding how the data is being sent through them within a given server or, or cluster. And then the participation graph, this graph really just shows you that Live Optics was in communication with all four of the servers for the entirety of the project. So, um, you know, all orange is great. And then at the bottom here, you see a little, um, you know, a dragging uh, a slider here. Uh, you can choose to, you know, say you wanted to kind of get more granular within a certain you know, hour period. So maybe we're going up and we're like, okay, wow, it's a big spike, you know, around this time here. We can actually click these, dra uh, uh, drag these sliders and we can, you know, blow up the graphs for that, you know, hour period and really look deeper into what's going on there. I scroll back up to the top here and drop this little more information down. So um, this often gets overlooked. Um, this section, you know, shows us the, um, you know, a lot of the information that we've already seen within the graphs, but a little bit more as well. So for instance, you'll see, you know, it lets us know what the read write ratio is. This is a, um, you know, huge determiner when um, sizing for storage. So this, you know, the, the more reads and, and writes you have, depending on that ratio, is going to affect the, um, you know, the expected IOPS that you're going to be seeing out of a storage system. So it's important that we're kind of seeing how that, you know, reads and, and writes are affecting, um, you know, your workload. Uh, from an IOPS perspective, it gives you not only the, the peak here, but it also gives you the, the 95th percentile once again. Um, and then it also lets you see, uh, this is important, the block size. So a lot of times our, our customers are asking, Oh, hey, you know, how do I see what my, my block size is, right? This is where you would go see that. So you'd see, you know, that the, what the block size for the reads are as well as the writes. And you can also see the, the reads and writes uh, average latency based on, you know, um, you know, reads and writes as well in the milliseconds. All right. Uh, from here, we're going to go over into the server section. Now, this tab, this really, you know, still within the performance section, but this shows us really everything we just saw in the graphs. Uh, uh, tab, but, you know, just in like an Excel form. So if you, you know, maybe if the graphs are a little bit overwhelming to you, or maybe you want to export this and, and take it on the go with you, you can, you know, look here and, and, and see a different view. 
uh, the inventory tab. Customers love this because this not only shows the server names and the you know what the role is, but it also gives you an understanding in an inventory of what the OS is that's being ran. So we can see specifically it's Windows Server 2019 Data Center is being ran on the server, as well as you know the server manufacturer, uh, the model, the service tags. Uh, you know you can see the CPU in it as well. But uh, being able to see your service tags within Live Optics is a huge value add that a lot of our customers are loving. A hypervisor, this is showing all of the resources and how they're distributed across the VMs uh, from the hypervisor's perspective. So this is where we'll often go to size for virtual environments and um, yeah. Um, disks, uh, this shows you all the different disks within the, um, the cluster um, individually. So you can kind of, you know, see exactly where the queue depth is um, from, you know, largest to smallest, or maybe if you want to see you know, where the latency is at, a, you know, what disk is experiencing the highest amount of latency, what, you know, what is shown the most queue depth, et cetera. Um, it's also useful because, you know, we like to see, I mentioned read write ratio earlier, you know, it's nice to see how the workloads, um, you know, differ from one another. So even just seeing, you know, how, you know, disk one here is on server one is uh, basically a 30, 70 read write ratio versus, you know, the disk five on server three is a, uh, you know, essentially, you know, all you know all rights workload so um, that's something we like to kind of see especially again when sizing out environments this helps us just really understand how different workloads are reacting to um, you know to your environment today and from here uh, that essentially is the performance tab uh, you can also see your installed applications if you choose to do so um, really you know customers don't use this too much for this tab, but again, if you want to look at that, that is nice to have there. Next, we're going to be looking at the virtual section. Now, this section allows us to uh, see inventory of all the virtual machines that we have running on these hypervisors, and it shows us the, you know, not only, you know, what the actual names of those VMs are, but also the amounts of uh, different resources we have allocated to those, as well as what those individual OSs are for each VM. And now, you know, just a, a reminder, you know, we do have this in anonymous mode, so that's why you see this as you know guest VM one rather than the actual name of the VM that I have assigned to it. Um, again, when you're viewing your own live optics report, you know you'll see it in non-anonymous mode, uh, meaning that you can actually see the actual names assigned to it, which makes it a lot easier to differentiate when reviewing your live optics report. Uh, from here, not only you know can you see the different resources allocated to each VMs, you can also see whether or not those VMs are turned on or not. So you can see that you know although I have 34 total VMs in this cluster. I have 31 running, I guess VMs 28, 30, and 32 are not running, and I have no resources currently allocated to them. So again, this is helpful. We've had customers in the past who, you know, maybe forgot to turn, uh, or I'm sorry, maybe they forgot to unallocate resources when they turned the VMs off. So they were still, you know, consuming resources. Um, you know, they were able to give those back to the cluster after running this and saying, hey, you know, we have a, a VM that's off, you know, maybe it's seasonal only for, you know, one time of the year. Know, let's let's get those resources back to the cluster, um, you know, and, and then you know reallocate if we ever need to turn it back on again. Uh, in addition, there, you know, you can kind of look at it from a virtual uh, perspective. You can see you know, a, a brief little summary uh, from the physical standpoint as well. You can also see different graphs associated associated with the virtual um, uh, the virtual machines as well. So you can see you know VM resource distribution. You can see what you know how anything may be over provisioned from a, a vCPU or, or, or memory standpoint or even st storage. And also you can do the uh, the provisioning contrast as well and see you know, uh, the different graphs that are associated with it as well. The last section I'm going to be going into is the cloud pricing section. Now this section is something that um, is pretty useful for customers, especially if you are um, toying with the idea of potentially going to the public cloud. Uh, for either your entire workload or even part of your workload. So once you get Live, Live Optics ran, um, you know, you can select the region that you're located in. Uh, you can select get latest pricing. And what this does is this utilizes the APIs that Azure, uh, AWS, and uh, GCP give to the public anyway. And um, it uses those APIs to essentially uh, give you, you know, pretty accurate um, pricing of how much it would cost to spin up this workload or workloads within that public cloud. Now, you know, it's not out the door pricing, but again, it does get you pretty close to where it's really opened up customers' eyes to how much, you know, it does cost to put, you know, certain workloads into the cloud and, and does help make that decision whether or not it does make sense based on your specific workload. The last part of LiveOptics I do want to touch on uh, before we close up 
is this bar here at the top and we're back at the environment page. Um, this reports icon here is which allows you to essentially export the live optics report into either a PowerPoint or into a Excel file. So that's useful if you maybe want to, you know, send it to executives or maybe you want to take it on the go with you and, and review it. Um, you know, maybe you're not going to have access to the internet. You want to review this offline. That's something you can, you know, download and, and take with you. Um, in addition, if you have anybody else within uh, your company or, you know, in, within your network that uh, utilizes live optics, whether they're, you know, part of your company or maybe it's your Dell team or maybe a partner that you work with, you can share the live optics report with them um, by clicking the share icon. You can either link another user to this project um, or you can even make a copy of the project for, you know, specific users. And this is where when you share it with somebody, you'll have the option to share it with them. Um, either, you know, they can see everything, meaning that they can see the names of your servers, the names of your, you know, virtual machines, uh, the names of your disks, um, or you can choose to share in anonymous mode. And that is where, just like you guys see on my screen today, um, you know, where you're going to be just seeing everything with default names, such as, you know, VM123, server123, et cetera. So this is where you're going to be sharing that with, again, other users who would want to access this within the Live Optics portal. All right. Well, I know I just threw a lot of information at you guys, so I'm going to let you guys digest that for a little bit. But, um, you know, if you guys have any questions about your report specifically, right, reach out to us directly or let us know in the comments. And we're happy to uh, review your report and, and really identify uh, your unique uh, performance profile and, and walk you through you know, what your hardware is saying to you. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, um, you know, let us know as well. We're happy to help, happy to walk you through. And um, yeah, be sure to look out for our next Live Optics video. Thanks, everyone.